What's up, y'all? You already know who it is. It's your girl, Coco. And we are on the first episode of Chopping It Up With Coco Speed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is the pilot show. Word of the day, pilot. First show of the season. You know what I'm saying? So I'm super, super excited. I miss you guys. If you are new to the platform, what's up? And if you're not, you already know it's time to cut up. You know what I mean? So we're gonna first get into it. You know, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Ho. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Shout out to Jay-Z. Y'all seen Jay-Z at the Super Bowl? We're gonna get into that later. Know what he doing with his hair, but I kinda like it on the older nigga. Like, Wix on a young person scared me, but Wix on the older person is giving me ancestral. You know, so shout out to Jay-Z for the weeks. But anywho, my name is Coco, like chocolate. You know, not like Chanel. So I have to be very specific about that because I be want people to put the fucking A, put the A on it. You know what I mean? So that when I go to Chanel, we can get custom A patches. My patches probably gonna be 42 bands, but you got the A to make it a cocoa edition versus a cocoa edition. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to steal and I'm just trying to get my endorsements ready because they're coming. So Miss Chanel, I done emailed you 52 times. Trying to let you know I'm the next, I'm the next thing. I'm the next Kanye. You can use me. I don't give a damn. <laughs> use me for the money, honey. But yeah, basically, I started this show, brought this show to life because I wanted to kind of share my platform and also be funny and witty. So we're trying to bring back like Rap City, the basement. You know what I'm saying? Where people used to come on and do their thing. We ain't just gonna talk you to death. So. This episode ain't gonna be like the episodes to come. This is just a little taste of what the season's gonna hold. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about that. But pretty much I do stand-up comedy. Straight out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, 423. <laughs> we volunteers, that's the state, but we the lookouts. That's our personal thing. We know when shit comes. We know when stuff coming. You know what I'm saying? But we be looking out for this shit. So, shout out to the lookout. Shout out to the home team. Greatly, greatly appreciate you. And before we get started, shout out to Authentic TV. Yes! A collab. If you're in the 605 area, Nashville area, anywhere area, because we were wide. Hit up Authentic TV, man, for the best production, best outcome. Y'all see me? From an iPhone to a real phone. You feel what I'm saying? From an iPhone to a real screen. You know? Dang, y'all remember I used to do that shit on Facebook? Wait on y'all to reply. Now I need it. Now I'm just playing. I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for holding me down. <laughs> P.O.P. Hold it down. Um, basically, what I what I represent is just to be yourself. You know, this this is really about being yourself. And eventually it'll become interactive so I can hear from you guys and we can talk. You know what I mean? But ultimately, be yourself. Be true to yourself. It'll all come to life. In the due time. So now that we're done with all that hoopla, you know, and all the wham bam. Thank you, man. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get right into it. The Super Bowl. Damn, man. I talk. If you did not bet on my homes, you probably at home alone. <laughs> you probably got shot. I don't know the Philadelphia Eagles personally. You know, but when I realized my home got that, he run like he mad at the ground. That nigga take off. You can't catch him. You know, and he ran right through there to the finish line. So I got my little 200. What'd you make? You know, you know when, when a woman started begging, she done met somebody that didn't taught her how to beg. Because I didn't, I didn't know how to lock my shit in. I went on there, the, the shit was locked. It was like locks on my picks. I was like, what's going on? Way too late. Like, you know, so I'm trying to see if it's a code to unlock the pigs. Like, it was it was crazy, but I ended up making a street bet. Just that, you know, hey, such and such is gonna win, the Chiefs gonna win, and I won my money. So shout out to the loser of that. I bet with you in the day, you know. But on top of that, did y'all see that dude with the two Cuban links on standing behind him? With his eyes. If you watch the Super Bowl, you see him there with the eyes. And the two Cuban link chains on standing right behind my homes. Focusing on the planes. They be giving you them real drugs. Them the drugs you gotta watch. You gotta watch the drugs that's prescribed. <laughs> Wake your ass up. Here, take this. You ain't playing. 
We need to see everything. And the guy was like, this the whole time. I said, yeah, he geeking. And he geeking. And he wore his, he wore his chains to the outsides. <laughs> I said, yeah. He that, he that a watch. <laughs> I would like to get a watching position in any professional league. I would sit there and watch your ass all day. I would sit there and chill you on all day. You know, different players do different things. That's why the team's so big. You got people that clap. They got to clap. Like, if they don't clap, they lose their job. You didn't know that exists? I would definitely. You got the people that watch, you know, pop this. And watch it, cause it, you, y'all know, y'all know. Adderall, I feel like I could lift a tree up. Shout out to Drake. <laughs> he told you, let me be on Adderall. Drake, man, Drake. Thought it was God's plan. You gonna put God in this stuff you got going on, man? I don't put God in there. I don't put my God in there. I don't know what you got going on, but they, out of all people, they called you Drake, and you half white, so it ain't black man. So you, you know what I'm saying? You got some genetic shit in there that can help you out. But they called you to court. Iffy. It's iffy. You know, time will tell. But I, I believe in you. I got faith in you, baby. Iffy. Anyways, we're going to get up off the track because I like him. When I meet him, I don't want him to find this episode. I don't want him to find it. That's just... That's not what I'm on. I'm not on that. What about Rihanna, y'all being pregnant again? Rihanna getting booted, man. I knew Rihanna was a freak when Chris Brown beat her ass. I knew it. It had to be some emotional stuff that she did to make that man come out of character. It's normally vagina. Vagina will get your head pushed in car windows. I know. Okay? I'm just a taller person. You got to be a real bold nigga to push a bitch my size into the window. But that vagina, make them try it every time. They try to bring me down the side. Boom, bam, thank you, ma'am, you know? But I knew then, Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna got that, she got that, that Fiji water. You know she from the other place. She got something going on, man. Hey, so rock ass is just, and then he was wearing maternity pants. Yeah, I see, I'm like, this nigga got on, they got on the same pants. <laughs> He really is devoted. So shout out to the devoted dad. You know what I'm saying? He come out there looking like a dad. With the, the, I ain't know what was going on. He was clapping. I ain't even seen AC. I thought he was hood. ASAP, can we get you back to rapping? Damn, I really fuck with ASAP gang and them. Like, I do. And I'm just waiting on you to stop nothing and start producing music. Both of y'all. Y'all are musicians. Can we get to the music? Damn. Damn. Well, we're going to clap it up for my black queen, man, for doing the Super Bowl. I'm so proud of her. Thank you so much for coming and giving us that little snippet of shit we've been hearing forever. We're waiting on the new stuff. And also, I am still waiting on the new Fenty line as well because I am your biggest fan on that side, too. Keep us sexy, Ree. Shout out to you. And fuck you, Kodak and Uncle Trump. How y'all gonna hate on Rihanna? Talking about this lame. Now y'all done did some lame shit. We can all account for the lame shit y'all done did. Y'all done did some lame shit. Everybody get lame once in a while. We ain't gonna say no when you was talking about hitting Lauren London when Nipsey Hussle passed. That disqualified you from the Super Bowl. You ain't gonna never perform at the Super Bowl for that. Like, once you did that, your time up. Trump can't help you. Nobody can't help you. So don't hate on no black queen for coming out there. Let her do her thing, man. Lame or not. That's some, that's some self-hatred ass shit, man. I ain't with that, y'all. I ain't with that. So I just wanted to say that. I do. Code and you up here, you like in my top, you like in my top four. When I'm getting mad. You in my top four when I get mad. <laughs> you don't went down a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and keep it moving. We're gonna keep it moving. Keep these topics moving. We ain't gonna dwell too long. You know what I'm saying? On them. The Chinese spy balloon, though. Is anybody like me who don't read that type of shit? So when you see it, you get real scared. <laughs> like, I need to get my life together. <laughs> right now. Like, I literally, I'm going to church. I'm not finna die by no Chinese spy balloon. If I could change that, I always wanted to die in my sleep. And I did pray for that. And they say when people hear your prayers, they are answered. So, 
a Chinese spy balloon a little bit weird. You know what I'm saying? You got the UFOs over Canada. You got AI. My job just told me they got AI cameras so that they can detect somebody and follow them based off their movement. I work at Geodis Park. You don't know what Geodis Park is. I know because it's universal. It's the new soccer stadium in Nashville. You know what I'm saying? Home of the Nashville Soccer Club. Ooh, we love pro soccer. Yay. Um, so I work there and they got AI cameras. And I'm just like, who is AI? When I was growing up, AI was out in Iverson. That's the only AI I really know. Now you trying to tell me I can be followed by anything. It's getting real weird, y'all. Keep your eyes on the prize. Start dating foreign people that build this stuff. Get in where you fit in. Don't sit here and try to hold down your own race. You need to go on on over there and find your ally. Because it's time. It's time to get alliances. And yeah, we'll come up forever. You see, they taught you that. <laughs> they always reveal the stuff in movies. You need an alliance. This shit going to get real, real soon. So I keep my flock full. Jamaican, Haitian, Korean. I don't give a damn. I don't care what it is. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> I'm going to eat it for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, that's crazy. Um, Black China. Black China's pregnant again, supposedly. I didn't even know. But she is good for getting a man and giving him a baby. Every man that I know and that to be touched with, they coming out with a baby. Rob Kardashian was the biggest shock of the world. Like, Rob, that was crazy. We expect the tiger. Tiger a little weird. I get it. Okay. But Rob got robbed. <laughs> Literally, like, that's crazy. So I hope this new guy know what he in for. But I'm here to talk about the mama. If y'all seen previously on the internet, the mama had made a whole... Like video talking about how like China is finna get consumed by the Illuminati. I mean, half of us is like she's already in the Illuminati, but you know when it's confirmed by your mom, moms know, you know. And she went into talking about how like she just don't feel comfortable being around her own daughter without two pit bulls and a pistol. Literally, she said she need two pit bulls and a pistol. To even be around her own child, some crazy shit going on. But I knew Black China was a little crazy. When she started looking like the jig, saw this in her. Shit, it's weird. But y'all stay tuned for that. Keep your eyes on the prize for that. And now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of things. Ain't nobody got no wine opener. Got to DIY this shit, man. Got to DIY this shit. We ain't got no wine opener. But here's the wine of the day. You know what I'm saying? A little Chardonnay. Shout out to the person who put me on that. That's some nice, nice California shot. Now you can find me all this. <laughs> At a price affordable to you, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, but it is like side piece day. Oh, we're going to get into this relationship real quick. It is side piece day, man. And side piece day, I feel like as a side piece, you should be fortunate because you really get two days you get the 13th and the 15th if you gotta wait to after valentine's day though you probably like the third side piece you probably not the primary side piece you know what i'm saying because when it's the primary side piece they're gonna go ahead and have to wait like she having fun today like she got her gifts today so that when she do, when the man opened it on the 14th she already got her gifts she's not waiting to receive if you're waiting to receive you might need to leave so, I'm, I'm more of a 13th type of person. Like, don't get me out the way so I can still be in awe about what I got. Now, if I have to look and somebody else get it, then I'm waiting. I ain't going to hit the same. It's just it's going to hit different. Shout out to Susan. You know how little music is going to hit different. Okay? So, that, that's crazy. But I just got a question, you know, because me, I'm, I'm, I'm a romantic person. And I feel like... You always kind of supposed to exude these things. So, what about today? What about tomorrow, actually? What about the 14th makes a person just feel obligated? Is it because the whole world doing it? Is it because it was something that you did when you was growing up? Like, my mom always got me something on, on the 14th. Her birthday on the 15th. So, that was just a day that we just 
we always celebrate it. So then I'm grown up. It's not nothing that I feel like you got to do, but it's essential to my upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Like I always had some on Valentine's Day. I know y'all did. Because dating in this generation, y'all just not knowing what love is. <laughs> and nobody got y'all shit. So I ain't give you shit to either this year. Because I, 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 I was single this Valentine's Day. And that was a blessing. I saved a lot by switching my car insurance over to single. When riding in a coupe. Yeah. I was in a family van. SUV. Wide. High insurance. All red. And I had to switch it on. No. Two dumb. Black. Sedan. You know. <laughs> So I saved a lot, you know, so so I ain't, I ain't really tripping. I spent a little money on my, you know, my loved ones, my sisters, my parents, you know, things like that. My dad, you know, sent them a little love. But ultimately, you know, fuck them. I was, I, I, that's, that's how I was feeling, fuck them. So I just want to know, you drop in the comments, let me know. Is Valentine's Day something that you, just just essential to you? Or is it like this? Facade. Are you with the person of your dreams where every day is Valentine's Day, like Gucci said, and every, you know what I'm saying, every day is Christmas, every night is Valentine's Day. You know, that was one of my favorite songs, you know. And Keisha, Keisha, she keep having kids too, so I think that's true. She keep having kids. It's like, she was so ready when he got out, she done got this nigga three babies in three years. Like, damn, just calm down, let the nigga rap a little bit. Y'all need to start rapping. Like, <laughs> I mean, I get we supposed to have kids and reproduce and replenish by the earth. I'm so happy, but you starting to make put pressure on people who we ain't trying to have none. Then they gonna think something wrong with my ovaries, cause y'all done had seven kids in, in, in three years. You know how that's possible? We got people simulating kids for you. It's just crazy. It's a crazy world. But I'm just trying to figure out what the importance of Valentine's Day to you. I also got a fun fact that in Detroit they have Sweeties Day. Which is the male version of Valentine's Day, where all the women do something for their men. And I thought that was kind of clever, and that was kind of cool. But I feel like men getting a little demanding. Especially when motherfucker hit me up for $50 for a haircut. A haircut? I'd rather give you $50 for a 3 five. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> a haircut, I'll cut your hair for $50. $50, I was shaping you up, daddy. $50, I got you. But I was like, okay, now you getting pushy. <laughs> like, you pushing it. <laughs> you pushing it. Y'all getting a little feminine. I ain't, I ain't anti-male. I ain't even anti-male. At least I love my black kings. I love them. I love them to death, but y'all pushing. Okay, do the right thing. We'll get your hair cut. Don't be making posts and shit. Cash up your man, day. What? Wife. Back in the day, they used to work, hand they check to their wife, and come on to cook me. Everything was done. You don't need to tell me to cash up you nothing, cause now you acting like me. You know, so I just, you know, I've been, I've been watching, I've been watching. I got another episode for that when we gotta get into it. You know what I'm saying? How men think versus how women think. How men feel versus how women feel. We gonna have that, but I'm gonna have a few guests, so you know you don't just get one side. I don't want you to just get my opinion. I want this to really be the full structure of that. You know what I'm saying? What's the uh, what's the uh, the um, top ten songs though of Valentine's Day? That's what we need to figure. What's the playlist of the year? Because music is totally different. But when we come back, we'll get into that. I know what I would love to hear. So. Yeah, we'll be right back after this commercial. She's a motherfucking fool. She's from Chattanooga, Tennessee. All right? She coming down to tear this motherfucking stage down. So y'all please give it up for motherfucking Coco.
You gotta watch him. That done got me in Smyrna. Yeah. Tennessee? What the fuck is that? I literally thought it was like a fish. Nah, like, if somebody bring you a plate of Smyrna. I'm trying to see what that be like. You know, a little plate of Smyrna, man. I also sound like shit that make you itch. No, I got Smyrna. I don't know. I just was trying to figure out what the hell going on, though. They got this shit set up like a split decision, no, I don't know. If I want to be back there, that shit look like Bill Russell and them back there. Yeah, you look at you, yeah, I see you. Bill Russell in the business. You know, I'm like, shit, I don't know they coaches of Smyrna, I don't know, like, this shit crazy. I need a puff of a cigar, you know? I hit a cigar one time, man, I, I told them, man, come on, baby, let's go. I need a weed, a single weed. Like, I ain't trying. Then you hit that shit, you be like, <coughs> You know you a nigga then, don't you? You be like, oh, this where Adam kick in. You hit that cigar, go get it, girl. Your shit get beat. For real. And I like mine cut, sir. Well, I ain't gonna let you know what I like to smoke. You gotta come see me after the show. Bye, one on you. Welcome back to Chopping It Up with Coco Speaks. The Pally Show, first of the season, you know? So we're gonna jump right into something I like to do. I always have different segments on my set. So we're gonna go right into the sports segment. We touch bases. We touch bases on the Super Bowl. But we could not be sports fanatics or fans or lovers of the game if we didn't shout out the king, Mr. LeBron James. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For breaking the record to be scored in the league. If I was built like a goddamn robot or a Chevy Tahoe, I'd probably goddamn break a record too. I am kind of built like that. Well, he must work harder than me. But, <laughs> shout out to LeBron James for breaking the records. But, I found it quite odd that this nigga ain't played the last three games since he won and broke the record. It's like, if you break a record, do you get a day off? Or what? Like, is it Ferris Bueller? Like, what's going on, LeBron, man? Damn. We ain't know that. I ain't never seen Kobe break no record and just sit. Like, you was at the Super Bowl game. It's going to be all star weekend now. But, you know, you got a really, really bad wife. So, I probably wish she probably. It's Valentine's Day. That pussy might be on the line. I try to tell y'all. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You seen Last Man Holiday? You just got to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, shout out to LeBron for breaking that record. We love you. We love all your effort, for all your work. And just that you, you know, you set the bar very, very high. I haven't had a chance to taste that Lobos, but I'm, I'm coming for the tequila. I'm trying to see what you're working with. Because you, you, you know, you a very poised man. I don't know if you know how to get active on no liquor, so... I want to see what that, what that tastes like. So, we, we, we might have that featured on the show, a little Lobos tequila. Y'all try that out. That's LeBron James. If you don't know, man, you know. You know what I mean? I also feel like, you know, men in the in the, in the the sports industry are winning. We had two black quarterbacks. What? In the Super Bowl, two black quarterbacks. That's crazy. You know, shout out to Black History Month. And, my, and you know, Martin's dream. He had one. That one day, kids would play together. And them kids made it to the damn Super Bowl this year. That is so good. I bet they're getting hit in a comfortable bed right now. It's just like, that's some good shit, you know. So shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs. I like them. And I love that, you know, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. And it was just black. It was black. Also, shout out to the Kelsey Brothers. Making y'all mama proud. Like, white people always got to come in and add things to, to the mix. Two damn brothers. I didn't, I didn't even know that. They look completely different. One dressed like he hang with Lil Baby and the other one look like he form a little bit. You know, so you got one selling drops and one selling crops. I see what y'all doing there. Y'all got to do what y'all do. So shout out to the Kelsey Brothers for making their mama proud and putting their whole family on the map. I know that, 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 that was a good Super Bowl party. I wish I was at the Kelsey Super Bowl party. Like, 
You know, they probably was in the stands, but whoever wasn't, like, they third cousins and shit, I know they party was lit. Like, they cousins is playing in the Super Bowl. That's some, that's, some, that's some great stuff to see. But that is all right now that we got for your sports seg, and I'm pretty sure there's much more. So if you love sports, make sure you drop facts and things. Keep Coco tuned in so Coco can tune us in, you know? But we're going to go and get into the top 10 songs of the day. Holiday, love making day, whatever day, you know, because what's sex without music? I mean, when I think about Valentine's Day, that's what I think about. I don't have any kids, so if your parents don't be all sentimental, like, ah, I got kids, you out. How you get them? <laughs> How you get them? So we're going to start out with the, you know, a few songs, you know, top 10 playlists. And, you know, it, it varies depending on the style of the relationship. You know, you with a nigga who ain't really romantic, your top 10 might be a little different from a motherfucker who be in love correctly. You know, like they might be listening to Maxwell. You might be listening to Lil Dirt. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. I listen to Lil Dirt. You know, sometimes you just be in that mood like, we done had this Remy. We done had that Casamigos 42 No Chaser. I'm feeling like touching my toes at the lows. You know, that's totally different than having a nice glass of wine, Chardonnay. We just had a five-course meal. I'm finna go in here and Erica Badu do your ass to death. You know, so <laughs> it just depends on you. But, but you know, the top of the list, you know, and this, I don't want to step on nobody's toes, but we got to be honest and we got to be real. This person's music collection is tremendous and it's going to forever be a part of somebody's. History. So I just brought it. I brought. I started the list off with Honey Love R. Kelly. You know what I mean? I ain't want to put that with no ages in it. I just put, you know, Honey Love. All right. You know that ain't that ain't that ain't too pet fit. You know. So I uh I, I, I fuck with Honey Love. You know. You start that out. You like okay. <laughs> you know. For you young folks out there. You need to get into some honey love, okay? Get into some honey love for real. For the for the for the young people, like '90s and down. I know y'all really like R. Kelly played out, but that's gonna get you some cat even now today. If you get with your girl and you play honey love, it's inevitable. I don't know what this man put a Percocet in his music. Her clothes coming out. That's number one. Number two, Juicy Pretty Ricky. You know what you hear that boom doo doo. You know, man, you already know. Person finger already in your pants. It's crazy. It's like, that's the point, you know? So, Pretty Ricky, Juicy was a really, that's a really good one. That's gonna be on, that's gonna get you some, that's gonna get you some cat too, you know? Um, Tenderoni. Bobby Brown, I mean, Bobby Brown. I don't know why, I think I was made to that. I think my dad probably hit my mom from the back, maybe. And I'm like, two, boom, boom. I feel like Tenderoni was playing. Cause when I hear that, my heart belongs to a Roni. Macaroni is what he wanted to say, but he didn't say belong to a macaroni bowl. You know? So he's like, damn, what can I Tenderoni. It's tender, but it sounds like macaroni. My heart belongs to a tenderoni. That's crazy. I feel that. So that's on mine. Um, Homebody Dirt. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I like the I like the remix when Tiana Taylor came on there. But you know what I'm saying? Baby, when I smash you, put your back in me. Get my first, then I'm back in me. You know, did you hear what he was saying? It's like, that's kind of, that's some good sex. You know, so if you stay at home, ladies, if y'all you homebodies, you y'all know. When a nigga go out there and be doing all that stuff out there, he have to put them in, that little pressure on you. That's a good one. That still make you feel your dignity and you don't feel like a complete slut. You know? So, that, that's a good one. Um, If you making love to wait for you by future, you just like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just like me. You just like me. I feel that. Early in the morning, late at night, it don't matter what time it is. You know? So, that's on my And it's probably because Tim's in there too. So it kind of helped future out. It kind of helped him out a little bit. So we're gonna put that on there. I won't really, I don't really like the 
you falling out of love with me, so that's depressing. That's normally that's normally when you don't have a Valentine. You know what I'm saying? You getting left. So wait for you. We added that. We did candy rain. So for real. I mean, I'm always bringing the candy in there. I'm Coco for Christ's sake. It's sweet there. And it's sweet. You know, it's a sweet treat. So we had to bring candy rain and put so for real on there. And can we talk? That's like the first thing when a man's like, last night I saw you, but I was shy. You don't expect to hear that. You're like, what, you was shy? I was shy. You know, you was shy. I was shy. It was like, I was shy. I'm going to give you this cat. Like, you ain't coming pulling up on me like money bag. Yo, thank you. You finna just, what? What you think you finna do? Shit, I'm shy. You know, so I like a little chivalry. So that was a good sign to add. Can we talk? You know, and lastly, I had throat babies because when it all go down, I'm not trying to get pregnant. And that needs to be a constant reminder throughout the night because it can get real sensual. And you can get a little reckless and I can get a little reckless, but when you hear throat babies, I'm quite sure you're just gonna pull it out and just, you know the rest, you know? Yeah, slap in and do something else. Just don't put the baby in the throat. So we ain't got to worry about if it's gone. We know. You know? So we're going to give it up for be our cash, throw babies. That's my little Valentine's Day playlist. I am a little bit toxic, okay? Just calm down. There's more to come. More to see. More to do. You know? But let me know what you make a love to. Put some stuff on there. And I, you know, I always got some stuff in my back pocket. Plenty of songs. Plenty of songs. Plenty of love songs. That we can, you know what I'm saying, sway, you know, switch up the mood with. But right now, that pretty much sums up my 2023 playlist, you know. So, hey, I enjoy myself with you guys. I love you guys. Cheers. And I can't wait to see you the next episode. Be sure to add me on Instagram at Coco Speaks. C O C O A. S P E A K S speaks. It should say dick eater. It's short for dick eater, but that's the one. Okay, but I had to put it in a way that my mama didn't know. So yeah, when you see that, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Follow me. Subscribe to the YouTube page. C O C O A space speaks s-p-e-a-k-s man shout out to authentic tv you can find them on instagram as well a-u-t-e-n-i-k tv you feel what i'm saying authentic tv make sure y'all shut them out and if you're trying to catch me in a little stand up we on tour baby also you do comedy tour hosted by slick baby we got smurf we got Kelsey, we got Coco Speaks, and a bunch of others. You know what I'm saying? We keep, we, we add a move, but we on tour Monday, February the 13th. We'll be in Smyrna, you know what I'm saying? So you can always catch the next day, March 5th. We'll be at the Chapman Room for the girls just want to have fun, comedy, show. So, hey, man, tap in. Tap in with the winning team. We out.